Welcome back to another video, guys. Um, today, I want to talk about a topic that I'm actually pretty passionate about um, because I know that there's a lot of information that goes on about this topic that I feel is either disingenuous because the people just don't know a lot about the topic and they kind of generalize everything or it's just overall people just have negative feelings towards it and they're just gonna no matter what shit on it uh just put lack of a better terms um if you already saw the thumbnail we're gonna be talking about gotcha games we're gonna be talking about the truth about gotcha games and the reason why i want to do this is because i want to give people an understanding of what they're getting themselves into when they play gotcha games as well as I want people to know what to look out for and to see if this genre of games that they um, that are playing for them. I understand that there's different genres. I understand that a lot of people just don't want to play these games um, for X, Y, Z reasons, which is fine. But you know, I do notice that a lot of people, when they say, oh, hey, I don't want to play this game because of this, this, and that, it's because they're just not informed properly and then they tell other people and then these other people believe them and I want to do this video so that folks can understand just overall what they're getting themselves into um, I want you people to be able to you know, just link them to this video to say that hey um, if you have questions this guy right here can kind of break it down for you so this is just an overall public service announcement so to speak just so you can see or so that other people can see what they get themselves into so if you like what you're looking at if you like what you're hearing please just do me the honor like subscribe bell notification you already know and we're going to go ahead and jump into this topic and i have key notes that you're going to look at, you're going to see me looking at the screen right here so it's just so i can make sure that i can hit those key notes and you might even see me um i might put you no know, pictures and definitions of stuff um when i'm editing this video just so we can get kind of getting on that topic and just overall just i just want to make sure that everyone is informed so let's go ahead and jump into the first thing and yeah let's do this so the first thing just to talk about is what is the definition of a gotcha game um now there's a lot of people who can say their own personal but let's just go ahead and go straight to the wikipedia which i'm sure i'll show it around here somewhere on the screen but wikipedia says that a gotcha game is a video game that implements the gotcha or toy vending machine mechanic similar to loot boxes gotcha games entice players to spend in game currency to receive a random in-game item some in-game currency generally can be gained through gameplay and some by purchasing it from the game publisher using real world funds most gotcha games are free to play mobile games so that's something that's really to understand so in a nutshell the a gotcha game is a game that is considered to be um spending some type of currency rather if it's the free-to-play currency that the game produces or real world money in order to get a chance at something um this is definitely what is called um what a lot of people would say are in jesus as big you know big terms that is used running around you know people praying to r in jesus for these roles it's because that whenever you're doing these gotcha pulls so to speak and this is for like any type of game that has this mechanic there's a random chance of you being able to get the situation or get the, not the situation but to get the items that you're trying to get um a lot of times these games have things like banners and those banners are used to hype up and give you a higher chance of getting said item or character but you're still getting them at a random chance there's no guarantee that you're going to get them every time you do a roll so whenever you're looking at a lot of games there's um there's something called rates like what's the rate that you have a chance of getting these which we'll talk about that later um but that's the definition of a gotcha game it's a loot box slash i mean this is to call it what it is it's a gambling mechanic um that creates a sense of 
you know, of constantly having to do these said pulls in order to get said items. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is like, what are the key features of gotcha games? Something that gotcha games or all gotcha games are going to have. Uh, one of those things is battle passes. Uh, battle passes is when you spend real life money in order to log into the game daily in order to get these free or not free but get these extra items uh, on a battle pass um, the way that that works is you have to play the game in order to get experience to level up the battle pass to get the items that you paid for on the battle pass um, you can see this in games like Overwatch, which is, you know, which is known to having this this mechanic where if you want to get these premium high-end skins, you got to spend a little bit of money, and as you progress through it, you're able to um, unlock these features to be able to use them because you spend money on them. Uh, this is also for games like Diablo, and this is a mechanic that is used through gotcha games. Uh, gotcha games do the same thing um, that any other games have, um, that any of these other games that are out that are um, that uses it. Also, gotcha games are general, generally free to play with some sort of monetization in them. Um, so the game is free, you get it, download it. Mostly, like I said, you'll get them on mobile games, but there are PC games as well. Um, and you're able to play the game without spending, you know, without buying the game. But there are monetizations into the game that if you want to spend that money into it, you're able to purchase certain things. And again, we'll, we'll kind of break that down a little bit as well later on down the line so that you can kind of know what you're looking at and what you're looking for. But they're free to play games that are monetized. Another key feature about gotcha games is that they have um, periodic updates at intervals. A lot of games have it so that after every 6, 30 days or 60 days, they'll come out with an update, and an expansion of sorts that prolongs and progresses the game that gives the player more things to more options in the future. So when you're looking at games like Genshin Impact or Honkai Star Rail or Weathering Waves, they always come out with these updates and with these updates they have new characters that you can get and you're able to do the, the gotcha roles in order to get these new characters. Um, gotcha, all gotcha games are going to have that. And one of the last things they're going to have is kind of a gated progression which means that once you get all the content done and all the content out of the way you can't um you won't be able to progress further until they come out with new uh new games modes or new content for that game uh if you're looking at games like honkai star rail if you ever look at their updates when they're talking about their new patches that are coming out they always talk about new bosses, new levels, new maps, new characters, new events. And they get everybody the, the, the thrill of, I can't wait to play these new events. Um, the gated progression is there solely for the fact of allowing the games to progress longer and longer and adding to the joy. So if you're into like the main story modes of a lot of games like I am, you know, the new stories are always going to be a hype feature for me because I actually do like listening to the main stories of a lot of games. Uh, new game modes are always, you know, always looked upon as very well and very fun as well because it gives you a new way to play the game and it gives you a new way to just sit back and enjoy the game. So that's kind of like a lot of the key features that you can find in a gotcha game that um, that lets you know that, hey, you're probably playing a gotcha game. There's some other stuff too, but those are like the main four in my opinion. But again, I just want to express that gotcha games is gambling. You are gambling. Um, and the way that you're gambling is, is that you're you're having a random chance at something now rather if you're spending real world money or if you're spending in-game currency at the end of the day it is gambling so it does kind of hit that dopamine hit when you pull and grab the thing that you want 
and you know you're excited that you grab the thing that you want or if you get something earlier than you were expecting it makes you feel excited um, and also gotcha games a lot of gotcha games can give you a fear of a fear of missing out or FOMO depending on the game and honestly depending on you know what the game content is which is something we'll talk about a little bit later that FOMO can very well um, cause people to want to spend money in order to progress in order to play the game and this is something that's kind of been fixed but this one has kind of been made more ethical so to speak in the later games but also like when the uh, gotcha games were kind of first being you no know, expanded back in like 2010 when it really blew up this is a function nowadays in 2024 is completely different than how they were back in those days um but at the end of the day they do you know certain games do want to create that fomo in order so that you know you got to spend money in order to get this xyz uh but again we'll talk about it later where there are games that actually don't give you the feeling of fomo and actually is a lot easier to um, to play the games and it's a lot easier to enjoy the games without actually having to spend a dime and you know we'll talk about that later but let's go ahead and just go on to the next big topic that I want to discuss okay so the next big topic that I want to discuss is what are the misconceptions about gotcha games um, and this one is kind of an important one to me because recently I was you know looking at the Facebook group for Sword of Convalaria where they had an advertisement and people were in the comments and I was reading those comments and I saw that a lot of people were saying things like oh this game is pay to win oh this game is you know predatory oh this game is this this and that and a lot of the information was so generalized because people have these misconceptions about gotcha games and I kind of want to talk about those misconceptions as well as not as well as not directing the fact that yes gotcha games are predatory they are made so that people uh, spend money on them in order to you know progress if, they, if you're not spending money on it then you know how are they going to make their money so yes that is true but there are some companies that just do it in a way that is not draining and it allows everybody to have a way to play the game and have fun with the game without having to spend money because they know at the end of the day people are going to if they really enjoy their game they're going to spend and drop money on it but they also know that there's people they can't leave out people who don't want to spend again uh, spend money so one of the biggest misconceptions is free to play and pay to win and what do they actually mean um, they think that just because a game says free to play on the Steam store or on the app, that it means that you have to spend money inside the game in order to play the game. And that's honestly incorrect. And then also people think that just because you're spending money in the game, it's pay to win. So free to play means just what it says. You're able to play the game for free. You're able to progress through the game for free if you'd like. Um, this is in the early games it was really bad because the gotcha games weren't giving you a lot of in-game rewards they weren't very the, the companies weren't very um they weren't very customer friendly so to speak um this brings back like a game that i used to play called final fantasy brave exvius which was actually my first gotcha game um when the game came out and I played that game, I dropped a lot of money on that game. It was very bad. I got caught up in that in, in, in that I need to spend money. But also during that time I was you know I was also a content creator and I was one of the one of the bigger content creators playing Final Fantasy Brave Exvius at that time. Not as big as Click and Howls. Um, but I was definitely an up-and-coming person playing it during that time and I was spending a, a lot of money in that game because the way that Final Fantasy Brave Vexivus set their model up is that they had so much power creep with trying to creep with trying to complete certain content of the game that if you didn't have the latest and greatest characters or the latest and greatest mechanics then you were gonna have a hard time and a struggle with trying to do it 
Also, when it came to their characters, being able to you know level up their stars and get all these extra cool abilities and stuff, they made it so that you had to pull extra copies of these characters in order to you know get busted. So, and they did all this without there being any sort of really a any in-game rewards during the time so that you know you really couldn't play the game free to play if you wanted to do the hardest content in the game and the hardest content in the game was the best thing so what i'm getting at is is just because the game is free to play they made it so that you had to spend money in order to kind of play that hardest content and that's where a lot of people are still stuck because of games like that that's what's out um now that we're in 2024 you have a lot of games that don't make it like that they don't make it so that you have to you know grind the game endlessly for hours in order to get some you know in order to get anywhere they don't and this is like a lot of the newer games that have come out so you got games like honkai star rail which is completely free to play and it's free to play friendly where you are just able to play the game do your dailies do the events save up your in-game currency and once you save up your in-game currency you're able to go ahead and do roles on characters that you feel like that you want to do roles on and it also made it so that they got so much different content in the game that they made it so you don't have to have the latest and greatest character in order to do the content when you're looking at uh, content creators on streams right now there's a lot of content creators who've proven multiple times over that you don't have to do this in order to complete the content and you can still enjoy and play the games so when you're playing games like weathering waves which is another game where you can just do the dailies save the end game currency and then once you're doing that and you're and do the events you can save up and pull for characters that you want to do and Yes, there's always going to be some sort of power creep, but it doesn't invalidate the characters that you already have. And you're able to just play the game without spending a dime. And there's a lot of games that are following that same metric where you don't need to spend a dime on that game in order to play and sit back and have fun with the game. There's a new game right now that just came out recently called Zen of Zone Zero where they again it follows that same metric of you can play the game you know free to play uh, but you know you also gotta remember too this is a game that they want to make money and they also know that the casual players who are the ones that don't want to spend money they're the ones that's not going to make them the money so they got to make some sort of incentives to make people want to spend money so that's why you got the things like battle passes which is literally the cheapest amount of money that you can spend on a game and when you do get those battle passes it allows you to play the game play progress through get free rewards because well not free rewards but uh rewards from playing the game because of that battle pass so that you can progress and level up your characters or get in-game currency so that in the future you can do the gotcha pulls and the gotcha pulls is the biggest thing in gotcha games that's the most important thing because you want to get those characters you're able to do all of that without spending a dime but if you do spend so they, they, they show you that, but if you do spend just $10, so if you do spend just $20, you're able to get more rewards back for your pulls later on. And that's kind of how they, that's kind of how they get people to spend money. They make it so that the bare minimum of money that you can spend is so enticing that it just makes sense to do it. That's kind of, that just, that's just kind of how it is. The way that I play gotcha games, I play them completely different than when I played back in the day. Nowadays, if I really like and enjoy a game, I'm going to get the battle pass. I'm going to spend the $10 or $15 or whatever to get the battle pass. I never, I rarely do the, the, the extra 10 levels, like the higher end battle pass, 
But if I do do it, it's because the rewards that they give by also getting that extra 10 levels makes sense. So you might see me do it on Honkai Star Rail while I'll pay for the, the largest uh, battle pass on there because I want those extra gems because I save up all of my currency and all of my gems in order to be able to pull on characters that I want to do. Um, and we're going to talk about kind of like good, you know, good healthy habits to have when you're playing gacha games towards the end of the video. But, you know, I just want to get that misconception of free to play and pay to win. Because what that pay to win means is that you have to spend money in order to progress, in order to play, in order to complete content. You have to spend money in order to do that. And that's just not the case in this new field of gacha games that people are playing right now. You don't have to do that. Now, there are games that come out that make that but those are the reason why those games aren't as big as other games that are way more casual free to play friendly um games that are come out from you know hoya verse uh kuro games um there's another one that's like solo solo leveling you know games like that where they make it so that the casual and the people who support the games are able to spend a large amount of money if they want to but the but they don't have to. They just know that they can and they will because they want to do things faster. They want to do things and get the highest, fastest time. They want to do zero cycles. You know, they want to do all these extra things that you don't have to do, but they just want to do it for bragging rights. So that's why they want to spend the money. Um, but there's, like I said, there's a big difference between free to play and pay to win. And people just using those terms incorrectly. So I just want, that's, that's, that's one of the misconceptions. Um, another misconception that people have is that they are incomplete games and you have to pay to continue. So there is a, a thing in the gaming community right now where people are mad because you know they spend you know sixty dollars on the game, but then as the game is being updated and progress forward, that you know they have to spend more money in order to do it because the game is you know incomplete and that is true with a lot of games um but when it comes to gacha games it's a it's, it's a different um it's kind of a different formula because gacha games are not meant to be something that you pay one time and then that's it gacha games are meant to have consistent updates in order to make the game go longer, to make the game go for just a, an overall larger majority. They, they're made to tell a story and to make money. And they know that you'll they'll make money by having something that's consistently going forward, that's consistently spread through without, um, without any sense of, of, you know, without you having to just, you know, make one time payment, that's it. And a lot of gamers are mad about that and they, they they put it all into into one box and category but they don't realize that gotcha games is completely different than the stuff that they're mad about um and it, it's just something that i've seen when i was in that post where you know this one guy was just ranting and raving about how i'm sick and tired of these game companies you know giving us incomplete games and blah 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 and making it so that they monetize it and then now you have to but they don't really understand that a lot of those games that are doing that are trying to make money like how gotcha games are and that's the issue they're taking that monetization from gotcha games and turning them into something else this is usually games like loot box or looter shooters um and things like that and that people are just mad about that and it's just like it's two different things you're mad about mangoes but you're talking about strawberries you know so i just want to get that misconception out the way you know they're, they're not the same they're they're they have similarities but they're not the same thing um, now, another misconception that I want to talk about is, you know, and I think we've already dis discussed this, that you have to spend money to play the game. And again, that's not true. Just going back to everything I just said in the previous, it's just that you don't have to spend money in order to play a gotcha game. Um, and when you're playing the gotcha game free to play, you're not missing out on anything. And again, this is something that is done within the later years of 
you know, gotcha games as opposed to the beginning years. Because in the beginning, like I said, you know, they made it, it was very, it was horrible. I've played so many games where, you know, you got to spend money if you want to complete content. And nowadays, they make it so much, so much easier for casual gamers, for people to be free to play. They make it so much easier for them. And the games are coming out consistently looking better and better. And they make it so that you don't have to spend money. You don't have to drop any type of money. And if you want to play and enjoy the game, you can do that. And if you want to try and get a particular character that you're looking for, you just have to learn the mechanics of the game. Know what you have to, you know, know what you have to save up for. And then you just do the bare, you know, you just do the basics. Or you can just go all out and grind through if you want to. But again, you don't have to do that. You play the games the way that you want to play the games, and whatever effort you put into those games, you get, you know, you have a chance you have a chance of getting the things that you want. Um, a prime example of this is Honkai Star Rail. I played, the way that I play the game is that I pull on characters that I know I want to pull on. I play the games 50-50 and their pull rates to my advantage. So recently a, a character came out named Jade. I don't want Jade, um, so I'm not gonna pull on Jade. I'm just gonna save up all of my in-game currency until the character that comes out that I wanna play. And I know the next character that comes out, I don't want them either. So I'm gonna save up everything and save up my rewards until the next character comes out that I want to get. I will have, uh, I should have roughly about 180 to 200 pulls saved because of this tactic. I know for a fact that if you fail a 50-50, you have to, you know, the soft, the, the soft reroll is around 70 to 80. When I look at my pulls, I never go to, I, I never go to full pity. I always get my pulls around between 70 and 80. I always do. Sometimes I get them sooner, but I never, I've never had to go to the, to the end in order to get my, to the full 90. So I know that if I save up. 140 to 160 tickets I'm guaranteed to get that character but I also know that I did actually pull on the previous banner and I know that I pulled and got Firefly and since I got Firefly I know I'm not guaranteed to get that character so I, that's why I need to save up at least 140 pulls before that comes up so that I know I'm guaranteed to get that character in case I fail the 50-50. I also want that character's light cone. I know that I pulled on the previous banner's light cone for Ruan Mei because I wanted her light cone, but I failed that 50-50. Which means that when the new character comes out, the next time I pull on that banner, I'm guaranteed to get that light cone. So I just, I plan out things like that because I know what I need to save up and what I don't, you know, what, what I'm gonna need in order to play the game. And all I gotta do is just wake up, do my dailies and be done with it. If there's a new event, I'll run through and do the events real fast and then just do my dailies again. It takes little to no time out of my, out of my day in order to do this. This is called playing the game smart and this is called playing the game using the mechanics to better benefit me so that I don't have to spend money to play the game. I do spend money on the game because I get the battle passes. I like the extra gems that the battle pass gives me. I like the extra resources that the battle pass gives me. I like the free light cones that I get that the battle pass gives me. To me, it makes sense to spend that $10 in order to get all these extra rewards. And then down the line, if I want to spend a little extra money in order to get the extra 680 gems, I can. It just makes sense to me. I can do that. So. I plan out everything and I once I plan it out I just enact it and that's kind of how you have to play as a free-to-play player you have to plan your gems or your whatever the in-game currency is you have to plan that so that if there's a character that comes out that you really want then you go ahead and you just save up for those characters if you know that you haven't completed 
all the achievements or quests in the game work on doing that so that you can get the free in-game currency so that you'll be able to save up for those characters that you want but if you don't want to spend money in a game, you can't be that person that says, I want to get everything. I have to get everything. I have to get all the characters. I have to do that. Because then you're going to fall into that trap of, oh, well, I guess I'll just spend a little bit of money in order to do this. You have to be smart when you're playing gotcha games. If you don't play gotcha games smartly, you're going to fall into a trap of FOMO. You're going to fall into a trap of constantly having to do these the you know spending money and dropping money and you know you'll spend up spending more money than you want to spend now granted again if you have you know money that you can drop on the game and that you feel that comfortable and you feel that good about the game that you like it go ahead drop that money but if you're not trying to drop money don't do it and there are ways that you can play in order to not do it so yeah, so that's kind of it. That, that's how I play my gotcha games so that I play them um, in, a, in a way that is accustomed to my situation. And you have to do it as well. You have to play them to a way to adjust to your situation. There are tons of games out there that you can play. And by just in, implementing those type of you know thought processes it makes it so that you can still play the games have fun with them and not have to feel like that you have to you know drop them unless the games are made poorly there are games out there that are made poorly that are made trash and you got to know if the games that you're playing are those type of games and you know we can kind of go ahead and get into that because that is a segue into the next topic so the next big topic that i want to talk about is how can you tell if a game is a good gotcha or a bad gotcha? Now, let me reiterate this point. Gotcha games are predatory. They are made to have you spend money. But there are just some games that are better than other games because they make it so that they cater to that casual player, but also cater to those giga whales who just want to spend and drop a shit ton of money on the game. Um, and one of the best ways that you can kind of tell if a game is good is looking at their gotcha rates. When you look at their gotcha rates to see how a, a game can, um, like how you can achieve and acquire a character in the game, if their rates are good or not, depends on really if the game is free to play friendly or not, or if it's pay to win friendly. Let's take a look at Sword of Convalaria. The way Sword of Convalaria does their gotcha rates is they have a, a main banner and they make it so that if you roll 180, which I really hope they do change, I hope they drop it to like 160, but anyway, if you make a roll for 180, you're guaranteed to get that character. Uh, but they also make it so that their gotcha rates are 2%. So in order, you have a 2% chance in these rolls in order to pull these characters. And once you do pull these legendary characters, you have a 50-50 chance for that legendary character to be the banner character, which is the main character that they want, you know, that you're trying to get, or a standard character, which is a legendary character that, you know, you always have a chance of getting. What they do is, is that they they topple, generally gotcha games have a standard banner, and then they have those premier banners with the, with the rate-ups. Well, Sword of Convalaria makes it so that if you're pulling on their premier banner, you're also pulling on their standard banner. So if you're to get a guaranteed legendary on a standard banner is a hundred. So if you pull and you get a legendary character, if your legendary character is not that rate up that that premier character that you want to get, it pulls on it, it rolls onto the standard banner, which then resets that counter. So in theory, you're able to get a lot of different legendary characters without possibly getting that major banner character. 
but if you get up to 180 pulls you'll get that major character there's a lot of pros and cons because it kind of does give you that simulation of either winning a 50 50 or losing a 50 50 but they also make it so that you know you do have a chance that you could very well lose that 50 50 chance of getting that character but in hindsight you have multiple chances of getting legendary characters it's a different function it's a different kind of gotcha but something like that as opposed to how games like Wuthering Waves which makes it so that if you pull a five-star character you have a 50-50 chance of getting that five-star character and if you fail that chance the next time you get a five-star character you're guaranteed to get that so it, it depends on really just what you're looking at and how you know how do you decide if that's what you want to do and that's what you like um but looking at the rates and looking at how often the chances that you have to get those characters is a good way to indicate if those um if those games have good gotcha or bad gotcha another thing that you can look at in a gotcha game is look at the content look at the amount of content that comes out for the release Look at the kinds of content on release. Um, does the game have you know, uh, PvP features? Because if a game has a lot of PvP features where you're, up, where you're able to go up against other people, well, just want you to know that the PvP is going to be pay to win. You're going to have to spend a lot of money in order to get these stronger characters to be able to do that content. If it's, you know, if it's, if, if it's um, PvP. Now, to be that's just to be real if you want to get those top rankings those higher rankings you're going to have to spend money if you don't care about pvp then that doesn't matter to you which means that you know that you don't care about pvp you don't need to spend money in order to do it because you care about the other content you care about the other things that they have and the other content will like the other content that comes out it's not going to require you to have to drop money in order to have these overpowered characters in order to do that content you just have to play with more skill and you have to play with more thinking in order to do that content in order to beat it with the resources and characters that you have but that all comes down to good resource management and it just makes for me it makes the games fun when i have to sit there and think about okay well i have to do this i have to plan this in order to do it so like sort of convalaria being that is a very different type of gotcha game where it's a tactical strategy which i love tactical strategy games they make it so that you don't have to have these big legendary characters in order to do the content you can 100 percent play the game without spending money and be able to get characters that you want and get the and complete all the content um whereas games in the past it really wasn't that easy you you had to put in way more time and effort to be able to get to a point where you can complete certain content and they made it so that if you just drop some money on there you can get it done a lot faster so you'll be behind people nowadays there are a lot of games that are coming out or that have come out completely different it, they're, they're completely different they, they don't, you don't need to drop a lot of money you don't need to spend a lot of money in order to complete the content and you can play the way that you want to um, but you definitely want to look at those type of features to see if a game is a good one or a bad one um, another thing that you want to look at how much rewards you get just from playing the game rewards are very important because if you know the kind of rewards that you get by just playing the game that can give you an idea to plan out your roadmap when you're playing the game. So we'll use sort of comfort area again. In order to do a a 10 pool, you gotta have 1500 uh, luxite. Uh, luxite. I can't remember the other word to it, but uh, to the the the, the in-game currency to do pulls. Sword of Convalaria gives you a lot of free Luxite when you play the game. It gives you a ton of free Luxite when you first start playing the game. And they give you a lot of events and rewards in order to save up the Luxite so that you're able to do pulls in the future. And those are gated through playing during quests, events, achievements, and you're able to get that. And you're able to go through with that without spending a dime on the game 
and you can save up that free currency for the characters that you want to get. Games like uh, Honkai Star Rail and Wuwa, uh, Weathering Waves, they do the same thing. They give you so much free rewards that it makes it so much better for casual players to play in order to just plan out what they want to do in order to um, in order to pull on characters that they want to pull on. Um, like right now, currently for Weathering Waves, I want to get the new character Chang Li when she comes out in the think about a week or two. I want, I've been saving up my, my my materials to pull on that character. So when she comes out, if I fail the 50-50, then I can definitely go through the process again and get her on the next time of through. And I can also and get her weapon because the weapon banners are 100% and I know I just need three 10 pulls to get her weapon and I think I have that saved up already. So um, I will be able to have the character that I want and be able to play the game and enjoy the game just because of good management. Um, and that's due to the fact that they give you a lot of rewards. And then the last thing that you want to look at for about the gotcha games, if it's a good gotcha game or not, is the consist. Well, not the last thing, but the last thing I want to talk about with the content is uh, the consistency of updates. How often do they update the game? How often do they keep giving you new things to do in the game? How often do events come out for the game? How often are the major updates for it for the new content so that you can get in gems and things that all of that's important. For, to know if a game is a good gotcha game and a bad gotcha game and everything that I've talked about you can find those out by just literally looking at your favorite content creators or looking at content creators who talk about the game and when those content creators discuss things about those games it's a good source of information to give you an idea if you want to play the game or not if it's a good game or if it's a bad game if it's a a highly predatory game or a slightly predatory game um, is it free to play friendly or is it pay to win like the content creators give you that information by doing it themselves so that you are informed and so that you are able to play the games as well as of course so that you can watch our content that's the point we're content creators that's what we want to do um, but I know I already know some of you are sitting there on your chairs and they want to ask this next question. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into that next question. So I know that next question is going to be, um, what about the content creators? Which ones should you listen to? Um, let's be, let's be honest. Content creators do content because they want to... They, they don't want to just help out the communities. They want to talk about the things that are important to them as well as inform people to build an audience so that once you build an audience, you can make money. And there are a lot of shitty content creators out there and there are a lot of good content creators out there. But we're only going to talk about content creators in the gotcha space because that's literally what this whole thing is about gotcha games and one of the biggest things that you can look at for a content creator in a gotcha game is is that content creator sponsored or are they contracted to the game those are two very big distinctive differences if a content creator is contracted to the game so let's say Genshin Impact if a content creator is contracted to Genshin Impact Hoyoverse, that content creator cannot say anything bad about the game, even if they believe that there's things bad about the game. That is something that is misinformation. That is something that is highly not okay because they're contracted. To, they can't say, they can't be critical of those games. They're contracted by them. And I know that there's a difference between critical because, you know, someone in the comments is going to say, oh, but what about Braxophone? And Braxophone is different because Braxophone, when he does his videos about Honkai Star Rail or anything like that, he gives his, he gives, uh, what's it called? Constructive criticism. He gives very good constructive criticism. He's not overly critical of the games or the characters, but he gives constructive criticism, which is completely different, and there's a nuance to that. Um, 
if a person is contact, you know, let's let's talk about someone that's like, um, yeah, never mind. But let's just go through that. You know, it's just like if a person is contracted by the companies, they can they're limited to what they can say and what they can't say about that game, which is bad. If a person is sponsored, that's a different story because a sponsored person is not contracted by them. They can say what they need to say about the game, what is good, what is bad about it. And as long as they follow a certain type of guidelines where they're not you know, openly shitting on the game, they're not openly being toxic about to the game, it's just a sponsored thing. Then I think that sponsored is kind of okay because they're not contracted to that company. They're just saying, oh, well, you know, this is a two hour spon uh, sponsored stream. You know, we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be playing the game, blah, 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 blah. And I'll give you my honest opinion on that. Um, and then you have people who are not doing either one. You have content creators who are not contracted. And I think these are the ones that are the most important ones because these are the ones that they will tell you the truth of the matter about a game. They will tell you the, the, the ins and out. They'll tell you if a game is good or bad and they're gonna break all of that down for you. And these are content creators, much like Tectone, Gotcha Smack, Mtash, Hex Juice, Box2, um, Mr. Pokey. You know, these are people who are considered the, uh, the, I guess you can say freelance content creators, so to speak. But these are the guys who, you know, they, they don't want to be contracted and locked down to say you know so that they have to say a certain thing they want to be able to t give their information in a way that is very honest because they want to build a honest community and they want to build a, a a trust with people and a fan base so that they know what they're getting themselves into because these are people who genuinely don't want to see anyone cheated that's how i feel as well you know i would never do anything that's like contracted to a specific company i'll do sponsorships sure but i would never do anything that's contracted to a specific company so like even with the um current game that's coming out sort of con valeria i am a content i mean i am in their content creator program but i'm not i can do and say whatever i want to say about the game as long as i'm being giving constructive criticism and i'm not being you know negatively or toxically toxic um about the game critical like, if i'm not trying to defame the game you know those are two different things um so i can if they do something that's messing up i'm gonna call them out for messing up and i'm gonna say that but as long as i'm not doing anything that's trying to permanently defame them you know i can say and do whatever the fuck i want um and that's just you know that's that's what you want to look for when you're looking at content creators who are actually giving you their honest reviews about certain gotcha games because there are people who are going to be sponsored and there are people who's going to be contracted and there's people who aren't so that's what you want to look for in content creators um let's just go ahead and jump into my final thoughts about this because this is all right this is a long video and i give you guys so many long videos but i like to info dump and i like to yap so let's just go ahead and wrap this up to my final thoughts okay so my final thoughts about this really is i just want you guys to be informed about what you're getting yourself into when you're playing a gotcha game um if you have impulse troubles if you have if you're if you know you're super impulsive um and you know you 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 spend money up out the wahoo you know you you don't have disposable income um and you know that you have you know if you're already like a, a gambler um i would really just i just really want you to know that this is this is what you're getting yourself into and if you don't know how to inform yourself if you don't know how to educate yourself when you're playing gotcha games specific gotcha games maybe that this genre is just not for you maybe this genre is just something that you should probably stay the fuck away from um but if you but at the end of the day you're an adult if you're playing these games and if you you know yes kids play gotcha games and everything like that but you know again i know someone in my comments is going to say that bullshit what i'm trying to say is is that at the end of the day you're an adult you can make decisions for yourself and no one's going to tell you how to play your game if you want to spend thousands of dollars on a game 
by all means spend thousands of dollars on the game if you love it that much but don't bitch and moan and say oh the game is predatory the game made me do it because no they didn't you made that choice yourself um but there are people who play gotcha games who don't who are not informed and i'm hoping this video helps you out i'm hoping this video helps you understand what you're getting yourself into before you're playing a game like azure Permilia when it launches before you're playing Wuthering Ways, before you're playing Honkai Star Rail, before you're playing Zealous Zone Zero, I want you to be able to look and understand and inform yourself before you play the game. I want you to have actual real information and not this information from just disgruntled people who have no fucking clue what they're talking about. I mean, let's be a hundred. Would you go to a doctor to ask them you know how to flip hamburgers at mcdonald's would you go to mcdonald's and as a burger f flipper how to do a cat scan you know you want to talk to people who are actually involved and you want to talk to people who have been doing it for years if you don't know about the games because that's because you played the games doesn't mean you know about the games so if you don't know anything about it you want to go to the source you want to talk to people or you want to look at actual content creators who are actually about you know about that life that can help inform you to know what you're getting yourself into because at the end of the day that's what's important i want people to know that you do you can play a gotcha game and not fall into the fomo you can play a gotcha game and not fall into that 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 money trap as someone who has done that in the past who did fall into that trap you don't have to and a lot of the big content creators could tell you the same tectone talks about this all the time when he says that you know he went bankrupt playing gotcha games in the past he's he was he went homeless playing gotcha games in the past when he's playing like summoner's war you know he did that and a lot of the big content creators they they know that there's people who are going through the same things that they've been to and that's the reason why i like watching those type of content creators because they know what it feels like in order to fall into that trap and they want to make it so that people don't fall into that trap they understand and accept the fact that yes these games are predatory but you don't have to fall into those those traps in order and, and and miss out on something that generally could be good and there are companies that are making that predatory not as bad as other games so you know you got games like curl games you got games like you know companies like hoyoverse well only certain teams we don't talk about genshin impact because they you know trash um but you know they 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 do things where they make it so that that predatory state is not something that's so detrimental that you know it it, it harms them they they make it so that the games are they have casual but also make it so that people who are big fans are going to spend that money and a lot of those games do it because well waifus waifus is why people spend a lot of money there are so many people who love dropping money because of their waifus they will do it it has been proven it has been proven multiple times that if, if she got big tits you're probably going to drop the money um so there are always going to be people who do it. If you look at the gotcha reports that um, people like Gotcha Smack do and um, other people, when they look at like the revenues for the month, you're going to see it's a very lucrative. So people are going to spend money on those games because of whatever reason that they have. But it doesn't mean that you cannot play the games without spending a dime. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, my, you know. I, I hope this I, I hope this informs you. And if you ever have any questions, please drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you like this video. Um, and I definitely will see you guys in the next one. Peace.